Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Courtside with Bielens and Tennis, part of the Tennis Channel Podcast Network. We have with us today men's head tennis coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Nick Kroll. In four seasons at the helm for the Sooners, Coach Kroll has compiled a record of 65-32 and 32 and has led OU to three NCAA tournament bursts while coaching three players to All-American honors. He coached the 2017 NCAA doubles champs in Spencer Papa and Andrew Harris, who beat teams ranked 6, 3, 4, and 1 to take home the title. Coach Kroll has coached players that have gone on to win 119 professional titles. Prior to his arrival in Norman, Coach Kroll spent 13 years as an assistant coach and associate head coach at Florida State University, where he helped lead the Seminoles to the NCAA tournament in each of those seasons. Coach Kroll also has experience in the junior ranks. In 2010, he coached the Florida USTA under-18 team to a national championship. The win marked the first time since 1983 that the Florida team had won this prestigious tournament. For his efforts, he was named the USTA Florida Junior Coach of the Year. A native of Amarillo, Texas, Coach Kroll spent his playing days at the University of Texas. He was a two-time All-American in doubles and won the ITA National Indoor Championship in doubles with partner Michael Blue during his senior season. We are happy to have him on the pod tonight Please welcome to the pod, OU men's head coach, Nick Kroll. Coach, thank you so much for taking time walking us through your tennis journey. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me today. So, I, I mean, uh, like I've asked everybody recently, right? I mean, how are you? How's your family holding up? I know it's good to see the guys. I know it's probably good to get some practices in and, and, and even some matches. How's everybody holding up? Pretty well, pretty well. Family's doing well, you know, um, knock on wood everyone's stayed very healthy during this time and and uh kids are back in school I've got three children of my own so they're all back in school but you know sometimes it's virtual and sometimes they're in the class so we're all over the place uh we've got 10 guys back on the team right now and you know they're all from all over the country and the and the world so uh it's been great getting everybody back and we've actually been going going real steady here for the last eight or nine weeks so it's been great Awesome. Well, you've had, you've had a pretty cool tennis journey um, growing up. So if you don't mind, why don't we kind of start at the beginning and, and walk us through how you got started and um, maybe talk a little bit about some of your highlights in, in your junior career leading up to college. Sure. Well, um, yeah, my dad got me started in Amarillo, Texas. Um, started really, really young, uh, six, six years old, started playing in my first tournaments and, um, you know, started playing national tournaments traveling the national scene when I was nine years old. Um, the Bryan brothers were the same, same year as me. And I think we, we were some of the youngest guys at those tournaments in the 12 and unders. Um, so we grew up uh, playing all the Texas tournaments, the super champ tournaments, um, kind of, you know, till about 16 years old. And then at 16, started to travel with the U.S. national team um, to a lot of ITFs in Europe and, and South America. And and doing that scene, playing in some of the junior grand slams, and then, uh, you know, finished it out, had a couple good Kalamazoo's quarterfinals twice, um, semifinals a couple times in doubles, and, and uh, I, you know, my dad likes to tell people I got the sportsmanship award there at Kalamazoo one year, so, um, and then, and then from there, you know, headed off to, to play college tennis. Well, I mean, uh, let's stop right there because we said you're, you're a native of Amarillo, Texas. I mean, was there that, that, that's the dream school for most kids growing up in the state was, was that really the be all end all for you when you felt like you were skilled enough to compete there or were there other schools out there that, uh, you know, mm. obviously had interest in you, but did you have any real interest in that? Well, back, back then, you know, when I was 16, 17, 18, uh, I'd kind of, I was pretty focused on, on my tennis and, but I also liked kind of being relatively close to home. And so Texas was a great option at that time. And, um, and so I was looking at a few other schools, but I actually ended up not taking any visits and uh, committed, committed to the university of Texas right after Kalamazoo uh, my junior, my junior year. So um, that was kind of a, an easy uh, commitment for them. Uh, coach Snyder, my coach back then used to say Nick was the easiest recruit we ever had. Uh, he just committed without a visit. So yeah, didn't have to get on any traveling recruiting visits or anything. You had them in your own backyard. So those are, yeah. those are nice to have. Obviously your experience went very well 
Um, you were two-time All-American in doubles. You won the ITA National Indoor Championship in doubles. Pretty special uh, time for you there? Yeah, had a great team. You know, we had a lot of great team members. Um, had some great players on our team. Jack Brasington, um, who, went, who went on to be a, a top 100 player in the world, was on that team and played Andy Roddick third round of the U.S. Open one year, early 2000s. And um, we had a lot of good Americans on the team as well. And so it was a really, really great time there for us. And, and you know, we were quarter, quarterfinals was our best showing. Uh, we were round of 16 three times and then the quarters. A couple times we were top five in the country going into NCAs and, and we got upset. So, um, but uh, we lost to Georgia in 99, uh, round of 16. Um, they ended up winning it that year, so. Got it. Well, that's not a bad loss. That, that's yeah. not a bad loss when you lose to the team that wins it all, so. Yeah, so. Um, you, we, we, I mentioned in the intro, I mean, you've had success coaching, not only just at the collegiate level, but also at the junior level. Mm -hmm. um, was that something that you thought you could maybe make a career of out of, or, or was it something that you definitely thought you wanted to do? How, how did your transition take place? Well, you know, after, after college, um, I actually had, um, I had some health issues and I was going to go play pro tennis and I ended up not going right away to play pro. And, in that transition time, I started coaching some junior tennis in Austin, Texas, right outside of college. And then I actually moved to Tyler, Texas for a year and started coaching a bunch of junior players. And then at that time, I actually started playing again and uh, ended up getting a sponsor and went out and played for a year uh, back in 2003 um, and had a decent year, but ended up getting getting injured. I tore the tendon off bone on my wrist and um, I was in a cast for about six months, and uh, during that time period, Dwayne Holdquist at Florida State called me and uh, said, would you like to get into college coaching? And um, he was the assistant coach at Texas when I played there, so we had a good connection that way. Um, but I was coaching a lot of junior tennis there for a couple years, and did, you know, I, I kind of thought, you know, I might stay in the junior side, but then... Um, I, I really love competing and, and really competitive person and just like, you know, building, having, trying to build something. And, and so going to Florida state as a young coach was a great opportunity. Um, little did I know, I did not know I'd stay there 13 years. Um, but uh, that was, you know, that's how I transitioned into college coaching. Yeah. 13 years. Hey, and if you're happy there, a lot of, you know, I, I have a motto, don't mess with happy. Right. And yeah, obviously you, yeah. you were learning a lot. You were growing a lot. You loved it there to stay 13 years. Then you wind up, I mean, you're, here's a kid from Texas. Okay? You, wind up, you wind up coaching at Oklahoma. I mean, huge rivals yeah. uh, in, in all sports, in everything they do. Um, what's, I've had a couple of guests on here that were players, and then they turned coaching, and then they turned coaches, and they coached against their own college coach. Right. Um, here, it's, it's a little bit different in that you're just coaching against your alma mater. Um, yeah. Again, huge rivals. How's that? Was that was that a little weird, first couple of times? Well, you know, um, it, it's kind of funny because you're away you're away from your school for so long. Um, it had probably been uh, 16 years since I graduated, and and I was at Florida State for so long um, that a lot of people thought I went to Florida State. Okay, so um, no, but you know, I had a great, obviously, a great experience in Austin at UT. But uh, the day the day you get the job at Oklahoma, you become a Sooner, and uh, you know, just 100 percent bought into that program and and what they're doing there, and and so the transition for me wasn't really that hard. Um, sometimes it is it is a bit awkward uh, seeing the burn orange across the net, um, but uh, you you want to win uh, probably even even. Uh, even more when you're playing your alma mater. So now, I mean, you're, we're, we're talking across the net in tennis now outside of the, outside of the tennis arena, yeah. I mean, you got the red river shootout. I mean, which sure. side are you sitting on when, when, when you're at the game? Well, I'm sitting on the crimson and cream side, uh, you know, cheering on the Sooners and um, you know, obvious, obviously that's like the biggest game of the year for both teams. And, and we're competing with Texas all the time and everything uh, we do. I've gone to that game a couple of times and, uh, one half of the stadium is orange and one half of the stadium is red. And um, I actually 
where my ticket landed was literally right in the middle. It was kind of interesting. So, but I was wearing the crimson and cream. Uh, but yeah, my family, you know, my kids now are growing up in Norman and they're like, they're sooner born, sooner bred. Uh, they don't really even know anything about tech Texas or Texas. Yeah. But your parents, your parents do. And are they okay right. with, uh, with, with you, uh, sitting on that side Have they disowned you or anything or we're good. Uh, they, you know, they're always, they're always kind of rooting for where we're at. So, uh, right. you know, they've really bought in to, to being Sooners as well. And, and uh, it's a great place. Norman's a great place and uh, family atmosphere. Everyone's so welcoming there. And, and so, you know, we, we love it. We're having a great time. That's great. And, yeah. and I know it's just such a unique time um, for everybody right now that you got to be so blessed and grateful that people are healthy, obviously your own family. Um, but the guys as well, I know you're busy today. I know you've been practicing. You've been able to get in some matches. So um, I know you are traveling. I don't want to keep you that long, but there's one. Um, the main mutual connection that both of us have is Rahil Maji, who actually was a volunteer assistant coach for you um, a couple of years ago. And he's been doing this for, for the listeners that don't know. He's had this Mission Elite uh, performance company that he started and it's, it's going crazy. And he's getting guys like joining left and right. Um, not only does he have his own great players in the program, he's getting trainers and psychologists and yoga instructors. I mean, he is, he's going like gangbusters on this thing. Any, any thoughts on Raheel? You know, Raheel is, uh, you know, he's a young guy, but he's, he's wise beyond his years. And, uh, he's like a sponge. He learns every single day. He and I probably talk, three or four times a week still. And um, I learned from him. Uh, he learns from me a little bit. And, and, uh, but when he was with us, he did a phenomenal job for the Sooners. Total volunteer uh, that year, just was dedicated to the team. Whatever the team needed, he was able to do. And uh, he brought a lot of wisdom and helped us win a lot of matches. And I remember um, we had an unbelievable match against Texas A&M uh, to go to the Sweet 16. And and we were down seven match points in that match in the round of 32. And uh, Rahil was an instrumental part in helping us get, get to the round of 16 that year. He's got such a great mindset, and he's so great to talk to. And I can tell he's, he speaks so, so highly of you. He could not speak more highly of you when, when we were chatting. So um, yeah. it's a great connection to have. He's a great guy. And, uh, hey, I, I appreciate you taking some time today. And I know, like I said, I know you're traveling, so I'm not going to keep you much longer. But, Coach Kroll, uh, best of luck. Stay healthy, you, family, the kids, you know, the whole squad. And uh, we'll, we'll get through this sooner rather than later. That's right. That's right. We'll all work together. And we're just so happy to be healthy and playing tennis and uh, living life. So, boomer sooner. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good luck, Coach. All right. Thanks. Bye.